I like doing what I'm doing. You know, yeah. It's not like yeah, I'm, it's I'm not, not like, asking for you know you know sympathy here. I, I love doing what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong, but it's, yeah. Uh, but it is. We just finished the film on Friday. Oh, what is, what's today? Wednesday. Yeah, like four days ago, and we're still tweaking a little bit. We're still trying to squeeze on little tweaks, but. Uh, you know, we're, we have to abandon it at some point and let it out there. That's because it's never finished. Did you watch every second of footage? I watched every second of footage several times in wow. a day for several days. It's painful for me to now watch it. Like, you know, for, for, it's, it's, there's a numbness that happens. Like, because you, you're you're looking at little little bits and pieces, and then when I sit in a theater with with people, I'm you know I'm read, I'm trying to read them more than I'm watching the film myself. So like, there's whole scenes that. I sort of go through and I almost don't even register them anymore. But I realize that the audience is seeing them fresh for the first time and it's built so that each scene, you know, the, the stakes get raised so that, you know, it, it becomes more important with each little bit of exposition. But the whole run through, I haven't able to really been able to do like, I mean, for me, I had to wait a couple months before I could appreciate what we did with the Cove. But I understand the process now. Like, you know, you, the rough cut stage, it's always a disaster. You know, Scorsese was saying at the you know, Director's Guild, he says, you know, they did something like 14 rough cuts of, of Hugo before he finally figured out what the, what the story is. This is a scripted movie. <laughs> you know, it's like a documentary. You can go anywhere you want. And, you know, and then once you hit that mark, it's like, okay, then you keep on taking away the stuff you don't need. And then, you know, I, I know the film works. The audiences are, you know, laughing, crying, and cheering. And, you know, we get, you know, at Sundance, at Sundance which was... That's like that's a film. The, the Racing Extinction at Sundance is like a completely different film than what it's going to be. Than it was now. It's so yeah. much better now. Yeah. It's like, but that had like all standing ovations. Whoa. This film is like, if that film's here, the, the new cuts, I think, up here, it's even it just better. feels better. Wow. But just to say it's that, leaner? It's bigger. It's like, I don't know what to say. It's like, oh, we, we, we you know, there, like there was a placeholder for, you know, that scene with Tony Malkin at the Empire State Building. You know, that, that scene, it, there's a scene in there where he's talking about, you know, the greenhouse gases and what he did to green the building. But that was just sort of like a hanging chat. It was just left there. Because I knew it was a placeholder so that if we ever got to light up the Empire State Building, I didn't want that one to be edited out and have to put oh, it back nice. in. It needed to have everything built around it. Then when we finally got that, you know, that wasn't in the scene at Sundance. We just did this, you know, August 1st, three weeks ago. Oh, whoa. And so that's, you know, so the film was never going to be ready until we had that when we finally got it. I spent, I spent four years trying to light up that building. Whoa. You know, and finally got the permissions. It was like, you know, it was massively expensive and, you know, it took a lot of time. But once the payoff was huge. How, well, how long is the editing process? I mean, is that months? Five years. No, we had teams. Five we had, years? We had, team, we had teams. We had four, four editors on. For about two years. Oh my God! And then so you have, shot all this stuff. This stuff I haven't even seen. I mean, because he, I mean, we know that it wouldn't, wouldn't have worked, but um, I mean, it was just we had thou to a couple thousand hours of material. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, we try to. I try to see everything, but you know, the reality is we shoot so much these days. These days, it's really difficult to sit down and spend. Like at the Empire, Empire State Building, we had. No, take that back. We had go back. We we did a, a, a sh we, we lit up the United Nations last year with uh, Ban, Ban Ki Moon. We did this big, huge um, projection event outside the building, and we had nine cameras working for a three-hour event. So I mean, just do the math on that. You know, we had, you know, twenty-seven hours of footage of you know, for each night. and then it's like to, to to even just to scrub through it. But you have you have to do it. I mean, when we were doing the Cove, I remember thinking we, I shot this stuff, and I was in tears every day going to work, you know, because I thought, oh, this this is too tough. I'll let the, the edit, some of the editors do it. Yeah. And I remember sitting over one of the, one of these young editors, and it was, you know, they, they like this. You have that that little t that bar, and you can scrub through, you know, four hours and ten minutes of footage in, you know, ten seconds, or you can just spend four hours and. In ten minutes. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch it in real time, especially an editor. They're, they think they're that, like, they yeah. think they're God, where they can just like scroll through and find the magic moments. But I remember seeing there, there was a, a. I was looking. I was talking to one editor. The screens over here. And it was the cove. It was all red, and I just remember seeing this little thing of black come up. And I go, "What was that?" He said, "That's nothing." I said, "Just go back." And we we had to, you had to find it because it was like it was so delicate. This was the first, uh, the first iteration that, um, of the software that was allowed you to get footage off of a prosumer. 
um, digital camera. This is the first hard drive cameras ever made. And we went back, we I found it. What it was, that little blip was a, a diver. When a dolphin dies, it doesn't float to the surface, it sinks to the bottom. So the Japanese fishermen, they send divers down, like regular free divers down, no, no tanks. And what it was, was this guy, there was a, a, a diver had come up, he, uh, he had, and he, he blew blood out of a snorkel because the, the, the co was all blood. And then he, he's looking around for, to see where he was, he gets his bearings, and then he goes down and he has these yellow fins that go through the red water. Whoa. And I thought, okay, you gotta have I, that. Can't, I, can't, <laughs> I can't trust the editors anymore. So I, I looked through every second of that footage myself. Yeah. And that's, you know, so it took me about 30 days to do it. And it was like, I mean, I was literally in tears every day going to work, knowing I'd had to go through. And when you're looking at that much blood, every day, that much violence, you know, it does something to you. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, if we could use this film to, to change what things are going on, what's happening over there, it'll be worth it. And that was the biggest reward is to, you know, get a message from the mayor saying that we had, we had destroyed his business over there. <laughs> uh, it was music to my ears.